Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to a new episode of When You're Delusional, You're Gonna Be on TikTok. I do hope you're gonna enjoy the video, so let's just get into it. What does your person think about you? What does your person think about you? My name's Lalith Grace from Which the British and I'm here every day, most days, twice a day, doing free and gifted tarot readings on my live. So make sure you follow. So what does your person think about you? Let's have a look. What does your person think about you? I'm going to split the deck with my left hand using the heart's hand. And then we're going to put it back together and pull from the top. Oh my God. Oh my God. The moon. What? My loves, the moon is your person is harboring these deep, deep, deep feelings and emotions for you that they're not telling you. They're keeping them secret. The Ace of Cups and these emotions are of love, adoration, joy. When they look at you, they literally feel like you are filling their love cup up. It's beautiful. Ten of Pentacles, marriage. <laughs> marriage? I knew I should have mourned you since the beginning when we draw that first card. But this is what TikTok is all about. Absolute garbage. And these are the leftovers that are spilling from the garbage can. Who are you talking to? Do you have someone specific or you're talking to all of us? If you're talking to all of us, how about the people that are already married? I hope they start to moon you as well. But again, this is what TikTok is all about. Witches, tarot readers, astrologists and people that will read your horoscope. And I just trust them equally all the same. And this just like the horoscope is complete trash. Everyone is getting married. Everyone is getting promoted. Everyone is going to win the lottery. I don't even play the lottery. Shut up. I told you you're going to win the lottery. Well, okay. No one seems to lose their job. No one seems to be in a car accident. No one seems to lose their job and their wife because they lost their job. And the wife will take care that she's going to get everything in the divorce. And she's going to leave him because he lost his job. But still she's going to make sure that she's going to get child support or she's going to send him to jail. I guess those people don't exist because this lunatic drove the moon and some horoscope lady said they don't exist because everyone's getting promotions. Oh yeah, and notice how she says private reading available through link in my bio. That's right, I'm willing to bet everything that she's gonna charge you money for those private readings. Stop giving your hard-earned money to these scammers. These are names you should not name your child from the perspective of a teacher. I have taught for over seven years, no longer teach now, but these names will be forever ingrained in my brain. Names have power, and I'm doing you a service. Any name that sounds like Aiden, Caden, Jaden, Brayden, these boys are a lot. They're on the Hot Mess Express. Every single Emily or Emma I've had is afraid of the whole world. <laughs> They may be sweet girls, uh, but they are timid and fragile, fragile girls. That name is just too soft. Be careful of Jake, Kyle, Dylan, Josh. They may be common names, but they inherently have that frat boy energy. Be careful of boy names that start with J. Julian, Jaden, Jordan, Jackson. Jackson spelt like that. J names are toxic. And the Ia girls, Mia, Sophia, Olivia, they're going to give you a run for your money. Oh no, the purple plinkish hair lady doesn't teach anymore. What will those kids do now? I guess they're gonna have to go ahead and find a better teacher. I'm not sure that seven years is enough experience for you to make the right assumption, but whatever. What ages are we talking about though? What grades? First grade, second, eighth grade, high school, college? Were those kids seven, eight years old? Or were they teenagers and they started rebelling? Maybe it's just me, but I'm actually happy she's not teaching anymore. Every time I bring up fat phobia, everyone always thinks that that means that they hate fat people. And that's like, that's part of it, but like really, that's not what I'm talking about. Allow me to give you an example. I'm wearing this cute little outfit, ignore my room, it's so dirty. Notice how this gives me a little bump here. Looking at myself in this mirror, telling myself that this is not flattering is fat phobic. Why? Because looking at yourself in the mirror and thinking, wow, this region looks bigger, therefore it's not flattering, it's bad, it's ugly, it means that you have a bias that being in a larger body is bad. And that bias is literally what internalized fat phobia is. Bye. 
I actually would wish I can ignore your room, but to be honest, I just can't. It's disgusting, it's dirty, and me as a guy, I never had that much mess in my room in my entire life. Why do you even keep all those dirty clothes next to your bed? And me, yeah, sure. I always knew I'm fat phobic ever since I was, I don't know, 13, 14, and I started to like beautiful girls. Now those beautiful girls turned into beautiful women. And that's my preference. But did you get so far ahead that you even stopped blaming us, shaming us for our preferences that you turned on yourself? If you don't like yourself in the mirror, the way you look, you're fat phobic. I think it's safe to say that you should be focusing more on your mental issues than on your belly. Or maybe work on both at the same time, I don't know, but start with your mental issues. Let me read you what this first lady said. I don't know who needs to hear this, but muscle mass peaks in the third decade of life and declines 3 to 8% each decade, after which speedier declines after 60. Insufficient physical activity is the fourth leading cause of mortality. Make sure your wife or exercise is healthy and sustainable. Program accordingly. You need this for life. Now let's hear the second lady responding to all this. So I'm in bed and I was researching this because I was like, wow, that's interesting. Uh, I couldn't find any research to support it, but you know what else I didn't find? No one, not even the most fat phobic sources of medical information claim that fatness causes death. But I thought that's why everyone was on diets because they're doing it for their health. Hmm. Even the CDC, you guys, if you want to be on diets, that's perfectly fine. Just admit you're doing it because you want to look a certain way, period. You couldn't find any evidence that obesity is causing death. So how is this the first result for me? At least 2.8 people each year pass away as a result of being overweight or obese. How is this the second result I got? The leading causes of losing your life in the obese population were malignancy, 31%, infection, 26%, heart disease, 12.8%, and pulmonary embolism, 6.2%. Funny how you can find things if you're looking to find things. You're so proud that you did not find any results, and you showed us that graph with the heart disease is being number one of people losing their life. What are some of those reasons that are causing heart diseases? A 10 kilo higher body weight will increase the coronary heart disease by 12% and increases the risk for a stroke by 24%. So the data are there if you try to find them. But to be honest, the point to be argued here is this. It doesn't matter if you're doing it for your health or for your looks as long as you're doing it. The last thing you should do is to give up on yourself. Is there too much? Would you say for body count? Yeah. yeah? Oh, yeah. What would be that cutoff for you? If it got 30. Uh, actually, I don't know. 50. What's considered high? Like, I'd say 50. 50? I, I, I feel like it depends how old you are. Yeah, at this point in our lives, 22 years old, I would say probably like 50 was yeah. my max. 50 by the age of 22. That is for soccer teams with their coaches. NFL teams are permitted to have a maximum of 53 players. In college, teams can reach almost 100 players. So by the time you're gonna finish college, you're gonna do the entire football team. Do you think they're gonna retire your jersey when you finish college? How many is gonna be your max when you reach 30? Hopefully by then, after you finish with every male in your city, you're not gonna find a sim that doesn't know your reputation and decides to marry you because, you know, you're a goddess. And yes, I know she's attractive now, but if you find her on the streets, make sure you leave her on the streets. You wanna hit it, that's fine. Make sure you take her to a hotel room, not your home. Make sure you are protection and make sure you live without her knowing your real name so she can return to the streets where she belongs. Anyway, this is gonna be it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.